Welcome to Math 158, Functions, Graphs, and Matrices. This is Section 3.2, Compound Interest. In our previous video, we looked at simple interest. Okay, so I have a little summary here again. Um, simple interest, okay, um, investments earn interest only on the initial investment. Therefore, the amount of our growth is based only on the interest rate. Are you getting 6% interest, 10% interest? What is the interest rate that you are earning? In compound interest, not only do you earn interest on the initial investment, but you're also going to earn interest on all previously earned interest. Therefore, the amount of growth, um, the, the, how, how rapid your, your investment grows or, or depreciates, is going to be affected not only by the interest rate, but also by the compounding frequency. Will you earn interest annually, monthly, weekly, daily? How often is that interest compounded is going to affect the rate at which your investment increases okay so we're going to look at the formula for compound interest okay the future value a of an initial investment p earning a consistent compound interest rate r is given by this function here a equals p times one plus r over n to the nt where n is the number of times per year number of times the interest is paid per year annually, okay, and that's the compounding frequency. T is the number of years after the, after the initial investment is made, okay. R, remember, is going to be a percent. Sometimes you'll see in the textbook that, that I use for this course at MCC, they like to use I as opposed to R over N. I prefer to use R over N, interest rate divided by N, rather than having to remember what the I stands for. So I'm going to use R over N as opposed to I. But you'll also notice that in this formula, they use SV and PV for future value and present value. My formula up here, A and P, represent future amount and the initial principal. I don't really care. Sometimes I will use the A, sometimes I'll use FV, sometimes I'll use P, and sometimes I'll use PV. Okay, before I get going too much into this video, let's just do a little review. Um, previously, when we talked about exponential growth, we talked about a function y equals a times b to the x. And I'm going to make some adjustments to this, okay, as we go. First of all, what I'm going to do is remind ourselves that y is the value, the dependent variable. The value of y will depend on the value of x. So y is the value after we have multiplied a by b x times. So if I invest, let's just say that I invest $1,000, that would be my p, and I'm going to invest my interest. Let's just hypothetically say that we're going to earn 6% interest, and we're going to compound our interest annually. Okay, so our R is going to be 0 0.06. Okay, so my R is going to be 0 0.06, because that's 6%. Okay, and then T is going to be our time in years. Sorry about that notification. So if I allow A to be my future value, so y equals capital A, my future value. Little case A, that's my initial value, my principal, which is $1,000. Now I'm going to multiply, I'm going to get 6% each year, which means each year I'm going to multiply that times 1.06. And let me back that up a little bit. Because I'm going to get 100% back of what I invested plus 6% more each year for t years. Okay. Now, hypothetically, let's suppose that instead of investing into an account that pays my interest annually, I get my interest compounded monthly. What that means is instead of getting 6% interest each year, I'm going to get 1 12th of that interest each month. Okay, so I'm going to get half of uh, one twelfth of six percent each month, and that would be 0 0.005, which is half a percent each month or monthly. Okay, so what I'm going to do if I invest my money 
this is if n equals 1. If n equals 12, the future value of my account, or my future of value, my future amount A, is equal to my initial investment 1,000. I'm still going to have 100% of my initial, my entire investment, so that's that 1, plus I'm going to earn 6%, but it's compounded monthly. So I'm getting 1 12th to 6% each month, and then I'm not only investing for T years, but since this is months, it would be 12T months. Okay, and so this is where this formula, A equals P times 1 plus my interest rate over N to the NT comes from. It all extends from the exponential function that we looked at in recent videos. Okay, so moving on, let's just look at some computations that we can do. Suppose that I invest $500 into an account earning 3% interest compounded annually. Before I even answer question A, my future value A will equal my initial investment 500 times 1 plus 0 0.03, now it's annually over 1 to the 1t. And I didn't have to write the 1s in there since the n is 1. I chose to. So this becomes A equals 500 times 1.03 to the t. If I invest for 10 years, t would equal 10. And so the future value of my investment A is 500 times 1.03 to the 10th. And I'm certainly going to use my calculator to do that. 500 times 1.03 to the Tenth, and I enter it just like that. And after 10 years, my $500 investment will be worth $671.96. Okay. Now we're talking about money. A little, little side conversation here. We're talking about money. So two decimal places is good. Dollars and cents, we tend to go to two decimal places. I also want to stress a couple of things here. This 671.96. I just read that is $671.96. It actually says it's $671.96. We just translate the $0.96 into $0.96. Cents. So just be mindful of what we are doing in our casual conversation. Something else I want to stress that is a bit of a pet peeve of mine is notice that the dollar sign is in front of the number. In American currency, the dollar sign comes in front of the number. And yes, I'm a little emphatic about that. It amazes me how many students I see, how many texts I get, how many things I'm seeing recently. We're in American currency. We're putting the dollar sign after the dollar. And that is actually incorrect. So I'm going to be emphatic about the dollar sign coming in front of the number. All right. There was my commercial. Let's move forward. Same investment, if I invest $500 earning 3% interest compounded annually, so my equation is still A equals 500 times 1.03 to the T, how much will my investment be worth in 20 years? So that's 500 times 1.03 to the 20th. So 500 times 1.03 to the 20th, and we get $903.06. Okay. What about in 30 years? Well, same equation. Five, A equals 500 times 1.03 to the T, but in this case, the T is equal to 30. Now, something with the calculator here, um, I could just re-enter the 500 times 1.03 to the 30th, kind of like I did previously. But you can also cursor up, highlight the previous entry, whatever entry you want, press enter, and it's kind of like that's as close as the calculator, calculator comes to cut and paste. And I can just change the 20 to a 30. 1,200 and 13 dollars and 
63 cents. Now notice something here. We started with $500. Okay. In the first 10 years, our account went from 500 to 672, I'm going to call it. So we earned $172 in interest in the first 10 years. In the second 10 years, we went from 672 to 903. That's $200. And $31. Notice we earned more money in the second 10 years than we did in the first 10 years. Then notice in the next 10 years, we went from 903 to 1213, let's call it 1214. So we earned about $311. Notice that each 10 year period, I'm earning more money than the previous 10 year period. In simple interest, in each 10-year period, I would earn the same amount of interest as I did in the previous 10-year period. With compound, that's going to grow and grow and grow. Okay, so that is a, a quick look at the difference between simple and compound interest. Okay, let's look at D. So suppose you need your account to be worth $1,000 in 15 years. What interest rate would you need to earn? So in this case, a equals 500 times 1.03 to the T. Question though is what interest rate would I need to earn? So I don't know my interest rate. So then I'm going to change that back to 1 plus R. And in this case, I do know that the T value is 15 years. And I want my A to equal $1,000. Okay. So now to solve this, we've done these problems before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by dividing both sides by 500. 1,000 divided by 500 is 2. These 500s will cancel 1 plus R to the 15th. If 1 plus R to the 15th equals 2, I need to raise both sides to the 1 15th. And in that case, these exponents will cancel each other out. And 1 plus R will equal 2 to the 1 over 15 power, which is 1.047. 1 1.047. So notice that 1 plus R is equal to 1.047. And then now when I subtract 1 from both sides, R equals 0 0.047, or I would need to earn 4.7%. So I would need to earn 4.7% in order for my account to reach $1,000 in 15 years. The 3% just isn't going to get it there. However, let's look at Part E. Kind of look at the story, right? What if this? What if that? How would I figure this out? I'm doing my own money management. If the best interest rate that you can find is the 3%, then how long would it take for your account to be worth $1,000? So I still want my account to be worth $1,000. What's different in this case is that I'm starting with 500 and the best I can get is that 3% interest. The question is, what's T? How long will it take to get there? We're going to use logarithms this time. We're going to divide both sides by 500. And so we have 2 is 1.03 to the T. And if you remember, look at a previous video um, earlier, this section on um, logarithms. And you'll see that T is equal to the natural log of 2 divided by the natural log of 1.03. So the natural log of 2 divided by the natural log of 1.03 is 23.45 years. So I can get my years using um, logarithms that way. Another thing I can do is if you recall in the past, we've said, okay, remember that my function is y equals 500 times 1.03 to the t. When will y equal 1,000, okay? 
let's do a zoom six just to set my window back to a normal and let's go to y equals and what you'll see here is i've already entered 500 times 1.03 to the x and y2 equals 1000. now if i simply hit graph i'm not going to see anything because again i'm starting with 500 dollars and my account's going up to being worth $1,000. So I need my Y axis to at least go up to 1,000. So if I press window, I'm gonna make my Y max bigger than 1,000, let's just make it 1,200. I should now see both the exponential function and the linear function. I'm looking for the point over here to the right where they intersect. I'm not seeing that point because we only go 10 years into the future, right? Because the X max here is 10. We want to go farther in the future. Let's just look ahead 30 years and graph that. Notice the exponential function looks a little steeper just because we're looking farther into the future. And we want to look for this point of intersection here. So second, calculate number five, the point of intersection. Yes, Y1 is the first curve. Yes, Y2 is the second curve. And yes, that's a good enough guess. And notice that we will get an X value of 23.449772 or 23.45 years. So we'll take 23.45 years. So I can do this either way. Okay. F is a slightly different way to look at this money. Ask a slightly different question. If the best interest rate you can find is 3%, how long will it take for your account to be worth $1,600? So we said that A is one, I'm sorry, A is 500 times 1.03 to the T. How long will it take until the A is equal to 1,600? So I have either of the two options I mentioned above. Okay, I've already got it set up in the calculator. I think I'm gonna go that way for this time. So Y1 is still the 1,000, I'm sorry, the Y1 is still 500 times 1.03 to the X. My Y2 now is going to be 1,600. You'll notice that when I graph, I don't see the Y equals 1,600. I don't see that linear function because if you recall our window, we had set a maximum of 1,200. Let's just go up to 2,000. And we should see that, whoop. We don't see the point of intersection again. We went high enough, but again, that's farther into the future. So again, I need to reset my window. Let's just make that a 50 to make sure we go far enough. And sure enough, here's our point of intersection. Second, calculate. Number five, same thing. First curve, sure. Is Y2 my second curve? Sure. Press enter one more time for our guess. And we see that it will take 39.4 years. Okay, now you'll notice that again in number in part E, I went two decimal places. In number in part F, I went one decimal place. Um, just make sure that you round correctly. Okay, so there's an example of um, working with this function, compound interest. I'm sure we have a few more examples. Okay, now what's different here in number two? Very similar, right? I'm investing $1,500 into an account paying 6% interest, but now it's being compounded monthly. So the value of my account A will equal the initial investment 1,500 times one plus 0 0.06. That's my interest rate divided by 12 because I'm compounding the mantra, the interest monthly and now that's going to be to the 12 t so if i'm going to invest for 10 years my t value is going to be 10 and so that will equal 1500 times 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12 to the 12 times 10. So let's go to the calculator. So parts A, B, C, D, E, F, they're all the same questions as the previous problem. The only difference is, is that my R over N is not simply 0 
it's 0 0.06 over 12 because instead of compounding our interest annually, the interest is being compounded monthly. But everything else is the same. 1500 times 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12 to the 12 times 10. And I can do it this way. If I want to, I can multiply 12 times 10 in my head and get 120. Or just tell the calculator to do the multiplication for you. Okay. So at the end of 10 years, my $1,500 investment is now worth $2,729.10. What about 20 years? Rather than rewrite all of this, we know that the T now is going to be 20. I'm simply going to go back up, grab that entry, and replace the 10 with 20. So in 20 years, my investment will be worth $4,965.31. Okay. Make sure that you round correctly. I said that these problems were the same. I should have said they're similar to the previous problem. Numbers, uh, part C, how much would the account be worth in 20 years if the interest is compounded quarterly instead of monthly? Well, the difference there is that A would be 1,500 times 1 plus 0 0.06 over 4, since there are four quarters in the year. 4 times 20 in 20 years, four quarters per year. This exponent is 80 because in 20 years there are 80 quarters. So I can re-enter this, 1,500 times 1 plus 0 0.06 over 4 to the 4 times 20. I could have gone up and grabbed this and copied and pasted it like before and replaced the 12s with 4s. Um, that would be fine as well. So if my interest is compounded quarterly instead of monthly, my account would be worth $4,935.99. So notice it's a difference of about 30 bucks over 20 years, simply for compounding a little bit more frequently. In part D, okay, um, let's just say that we're going to go back to the monthly, okay? If A is equal to 1,500 times 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12 to the 12T, how long would it take, so I'm solving for T, for my account to be worth 5,000? I'm going to do this both ways again with the logs and then with the calculator. So 5,000, actually I'm going to do this a little bit differently. 1500 times 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12 to the 12t would equal 5000. Now I could do 0 0.06 divided by 12 is 0 0.005 and add 1 to that and write that this decimal inside here is 1.005. In this example, I'm going to choose to not do that and just show you another alternative with the calculator. I'm going to divide both sides by 1500. And so we have 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12 to the 12t equals 5000 over 1500. Again, quick refresher on logarithms. Recall. We talked about this in the past. If a to the x equals b, x will equal the log of b divided by the log of a. And it does not matter how gross, ugly, pretty, nice, simple the b looks or the a looks. So in this case, 12t will equal the natural log of 5,000 over 1,500 divided by the natural log of 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12. Natural log, and the calculator will handle that fine. The natural log of 5,000 over 1,500 divided by the natural log of 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12. 
Now, that's not T, that's 12T equals the 241.396. To find T, I would need to divide that by 12. So it will take 20.1 years. 240.4 months or 20.1 years. Okay, so make sure that you label it correctly. Right. Now, the other way we could have done that again on the calculator is I could have put in Y1, the 1500 times 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12 to the 12X, and I could have made this 5000. I'm just going to have to make sure that I set my window correctly so that my y max is bigger than whoops what did i do there my y max is got to be bigger than 5000 i see those intersecting second calculate number five first curve second curve guess notice i get 20.16 because the calculator is solving for x is solving for t it's solving for the time in years Okay, Part E, suppose I want my account to be worth $3,000 in 10 years. What interest rate would I need to earn? Now, what interest rate, this is a little bit more complicated. I want my A value to be $3,000 starting with $1,500. What interest rate would I need to earn if my interest is compounded monthly? Okay. Now I want it to be worth $3,000 in 10 years, so I'm going to replace the T with 10. Similar to a problem we've done before, let's divide both sides by 1,500. So 1 plus R over 12 to the 120 is equal to 2. So okay, 12 times 10 is 120. 3,000 divided by 1,500 is the 2. I'm now going to raise both sides to the 1 over 1 20th power. On the left-hand side, the 120, 120 will cancel. 1 plus R over 12 will equal 2 to the 1 over 120th power. And that's a really small number. But notice I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And now R over 12 equals this. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 12. Goodness. Ah. Uh, times 12. And we get 0 0.0695. So R would need to equal... 6.95%. The best interest rate I can find, however, is the 6% compounded monthly. So if the best I can find is 6% interest compounded monthly, and I want my account to be worth $3,000, in 10 years, what would my initial investment need to be? So I'm not going to start with $1,500. I'm going to start with P. Best I can get is the 6% interest compounded monthly for 10 years. This one is actually the easiest of all the problems we've done so far. Okay. Now, if I do all of this piece in the calculator, one plus 0 0.06 over 12 to the 12 times 10 or 120th, I get 1.819. So 3,000 is equal to P times 1.819, blah, 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 blah. To solve that for P, I'm simply going to divide both sides by the 1.819. I do not recommend that you go back to your calculator and enter 
3000 divided by 1.819. What I recommend that you do is 3000 divided by the previous entry. Oops, I'm sorry, not what I meant to do. 3000 divided by the previous answer, second ants. Notice on this negative side, that'll pull back your previous answer. Press enter. Your initial investment, P, would need to be $1,648 and let's call it 90 cents. So in other words, if I invest $1,500 at 6% interest compounded monthly, I will fall short of my goal of $3,000 in 10 years. If, though, I increase my initial investment to $1,648.90, then I will be able to accomplish my goal of raising my investment to $3,000 within 10 years. Okay. Now, Part G is an interesting question. What is the annual percentage yield? Now, let's suppose that we invest $100. At 6% interest compounded monthly for one year. What will be the value of my account? Now you would think that if you invest your in money at 6% interest, you would earn 6%. You would think that on $100, you would get, get a yield of $6. 6% of $100 is $6. And that is true if you are earning your interest compounded annually. If your interest is compounded annually, then in one year at 6% interest, you will earn $6 on 100. However, if my interest is compounded more frequently, I actually wound up with a yield higher than the interest rate. If I invest $100 at 6% interest compounded monthly for 12 months times one year, I will actually earn, let me put it this way, my account at the end of the one year, at the end of the one year, will be worth $106.17. This means I earned $6.17 interest on my $100. That is 6.17%. So even though my interest rate was 6% interest, my yield is 6.17% because that's how much money I actually earned on my investment. Okay. So the calculator is an amazing thing. And there's all kinds of things that we can do with the calculator. And I think it's really great that the, we can do with the calculator all the computations that we have done so far. Something I want to make sure to point out to you, though, is that your calculator contains programmed into it what's called a TVM solver. Okay, TVM, time value money. I will tell you that the graphing calculator is not the only place where you will find a TVM solver. You can look for them online. You can find an app for your phone. They exist. Most of them will work the same way. Please pay attention to the details. First of all, to find them, you're going to find the button that says apps. It's right here, apps. Your calculator may not have the same apps that mine has. Different calculators that have been released at different times that have they have a different they have different apps on them and you can download new apps for it if you'd like. Okay. Now this list is going to be alphabetical of all the apps that you have on your calculator with one notable exception. Finance will always be the first app listed. I don't know why Texas Instruments did that, but I'm really glad that they did because quite honestly, it's the only app I typically use. Okay, it is the one that I believe gets used the most frequently, and it is near the top. Okay, so we're going to select number one, finance, and then we're going to select the number one, the TVM solver. And you will find a screen that looks just like this. And on my note guide, I kind of listed those out. N. Now be careful, okay, in A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. N is equal to the NT. This value here is equal to the capital N. Okay. The interest rate R, I percent. 
Now, if I'm earning 6% interest in my equation, I would enter 0 0.06. However, in the calculator, I would enter 6%. Okay, and that's why it says I percent to get you to uh, understand as a little visual clue here that you don't move the decimal. PV is the present value. PMT is payment. Okay. And that's going to be set at zero for the rest of, for, for a majority of this video, I believe for the rest of this video, because we're just going to talk about I put money into an investment so our payment is zero. FV is the future value. So, um, present value is this P and future value is this A, just like we talked about before. Now, PY and CY, this is payments per year, and this is compounding periods per year. Okay. You'll notice the default here, payment is at the end. It's set there. That's the default. Please don't change that. Don't mess with that. We will talk about that at another time, but just leave that alone. Okay. Now, one thing I do want to show you in the graphing calculator about the PY and the CY. Notice that they're both set at equals to 1 right now. PY and CY are both 1. If I change PY to 12 and press Enter, notice that CY will change. If I change CY to, say, 6 and press Enter, notice that PY does not change. Okay, that's a feature built into the calculator. If I change PY, CY changes with it. If I change CY, then PY does not change. Remember I told you for the rest of this video, the payment is zero. Payments per year doesn't matter. For this video, the rest of this video, we're just going to default. I'll explain later and in the next video why. Um, but for now, payment is going to be equal to compoundings. So the PY and CY will be the same. So the CY, compoundings per year, if my interest is compounded monthly, then CY is 12. If my interest is compounded quarterly, then my CY would be 4. Okay. Now let's just make these both 12. What I tend to do is, since they're the same, I just change PY, press Enter, and all it does is it means I have the cursor down one less space, cursor back up one less space. So let's do a couple of problems with the calculator and see if this is going to be any easier. Okay, actually, let's go back through number two first. Suppose I invest $1,500. If I'm going to invest $1,500, that means that my present value is $1,500. I'm earning 6% interest compounded monthly, so my CY is 12. How much will my account be worth in 10 years? Now, in 10 years, that's 12 compounding periods, 12 months times 10 years. Now, notice if I put in 12 times 10 and press enter, the calculator will do that multiplication for me. The question is, how much will my account be worth in those 10 years? So I've got all my information put in. $1,500, 6% interest, compounded monthly for 10 years. I go to the future value and I press alpha. Now, notice the green above the enter here says solve. So, alpha, solve, $2,729.10. And that's the exact value I had here. Okay. Now, some people will freak out and say, how come there's a negative? Why is there a negative? Just ignore the negative. It's really kind of not that simple. You don't just ignore the negative. The way the TBM solver is programmed to think, quote unquote, I'm making air quotes, think, is differently, is, is different than you and I would think. I can think about this. So suppose I put money into an account. I'm going to leave it there for the long term. I just kind of want to peek in the window. I just want to check out how much money is in that account after 10 years. I'm not going to take it out, but I'm just going to leave it there. The TBM solver is not programmed to think that way. The TBM solver is programmed to, quote unquote, think that if you, um, I was going to say, if you put the money in, 
and you say you're going to leave it there for 10 years, it's programmed to believe that at the end of the 10 years, you're going to take that money back out. So my present value is positive because I'm making a deposit into that investment account and the future value is negative because now I'm taking the money out of that account. Okay, so those signs are directional. Present value, future value will always have opposite signs because your money is moving in opposite directions. Okay, part B, how much will my account be worth in 20 years? Here in the TVM solver, I'm simply going to, instead of 12 times 10, this is 12 times 20, nothing else changes. Alpha solve, $4,965.31. Okay. In part C, if my interest is going to be compounded monthly instead of quarterly, I'm going to change these from 12 to 4. Now, also, I need to change my N because that's four quarters per year for 20 years. Alpha solve $4,935.99. Okay. Now, D and E, I think, are the difficult problems here because I'm using logarithms and I'm taking the 120th power. With a TBM solver, how long would it take for my account to be worth $5,000? Notice, I'm going to invest $1,500, compounded monthly. So let's put that back to monthly. And I want my future value to be $5,000. Remember what I said about the sign. If you make both your PV and your FV positive, your calculator will scream at you or give you wrong answers. So I'm going to put in $1,500. And at the end of some period of time, when it reaches $5,000, I'm going to take the money back out, which is why that's negative. Now, when I solve for N, alpha, solve, notice we get the 241.396. Because my interest is compounded monthly, the calculator is giving, my, giving me my answers monthly. So that's 241.4 months. If I want to change that to years, I can simply go to the end here and divide this by 12 right here to change it back to 20.1 years. Okay, so solving each one of these doesn't make any difference depending on where we're at. Part E. Suppose I want my account to be worth $3,000 in 10 years. Again, we're compounding monthly. Now I'm going to invest, I want my $1,500 to be worth $3,000, but now in 10 years. What interest rate would I need to get? 6.95%. This is a lot simpler. Okay, this is a lot simpler. In my thinking, you need to understand the formulas. You need to practice with the formulas. But when it come, comes down to doing anything significant, like a test, like looking at your investments, like thinking about retirement, like giving someone financial advice, I'm going to suggest you're probably going to use the calculator anyway. Okay. Now, part F. Suppose that the best interest rate I can find is that 6%. Right? And I'm going to invest a different amount of money. How much money do I invest? in order for my account to be worth $3,000 in 10 years. 3,000 coming out stays, compounded monthly stays. My 12 times 10 years is still 120. The only thing now is what would my initial investment be? 1648.89, 90, 1648.90. Notice I'm getting the exact same answers, even rounded to the nearest two decimal places, okay? So there's a little look at the graphing calculator. So for the rest of the problems here, I'm going to use the TVM solver. Megabucks Corporation is issuing 10-year corporate bonds paying no interest during their lifetime, but they promise to pay their maturity value at the end of the 10 years. How much would you pay for bonds with a maturity value of $10,000 if you wish to get a return of 6.5% interest compounded monthly? A little confusing here. It says we're not paying interest, but you're getting money back. You're getting more money back than you paid in. Sounds like interest to me. So let's set this up with A. Sorry about that. A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. So I'm going to set it up this way first. 
the future value is $10,000. I kind of do this with my formula, right? If I'm hoping that my return is 6.5% interest compounded annually, and it's 10 years, oh, the question is, what would my initial principal be? And again, I can do this mechanically through the formula. I'm still going to use my calculator to do the computations, but what is it I'm trying to solve for? I'm trying to solve for my present value, my initial investment. Well, let's set this up. And I kind of go up and down, right? Uh, the TBM solver as I'm reading the question. My initial investment, my future value, I want to be $10,000. So I'm looking to get $10,000 back. Coming out of that account is going to be $10,000. It's annual interest. So these guys are both one down here at the bottom. I'm hoping that my investment is 6.5% interest. And it's a 10-year bond. If I calculate that present value, I have... $5,327.26. So this helps me know. I'm hoping, I'm going to buy a bond, and I'm hoping it's going to yield me 6.5% interest. What would I be willing to pay for that bond? If I pay 53, 27, 26 or less, I'm getting a return of 6.5% or more. Okay. We can use this, this function that looks like it's an investment, but it's also just exponential growth. Okay. Inflation in Jensen Land is currently 5% per year. You're considering buying a new television, but you're also considering waiting to make the purchase. If the television you're considering currently costs $500, how much would you expect a comparable TV to cost two years from now? Actually, just the morning, the morning to this morning, the day that I'm making this video, I heard something interesting on the news. I forgot what year it was, 1965, 1963, somewhere in the mid-60s. RCA um, released the first color television. What hit me was it was a 12 and a half inch screen, which seems fairly small. And it cost $1,000. That's a lot of money to pay for a TV today, but let's think about $1,000 in the mid-1960s. What does that cost in the early 2020s? A thousand dollars then, or a thousand dollars in 1965 dollars, is worth about ten thousand dollars currently, just because of inflation. Okay. So, what would this TV cost two years from now? Well, much like in a, uh, an investment, I'm going to think about it this way: What's the future value of something that is currently worth five hundred dollars? It is increasing at the rate of 5% per year for two years. Now, to be honest with you, in this case, if I go to second quit, I think 500 times 1.05 to the 2 is fairly easy. I would expect in two years that television to cost $551.25. That's where I say to my wife, I, might have, I better go buy it now. It's only going to get more expensive. We'll leave that alone because she just walked by and gave me a dirty look. So let's look at apps, finance, TVM solver. I can do this the same way. The present value of the television is $500. We're looking at annual growth for two years. And inflation we're expecting is about 5% per year, which is fairly steep. What would be the future value of that item? Okay, 551.25. When you talk about investment, it doesn't always have to be the future value of the dollars you put into a bank account. It could be the future value of a particular item that you currently own or are currently selling. Inflation in Jensen Lane is currently 5% per year. Which is more expensive, a car which costs $20,000 today or a similar car, $24,000? dollars three years from now well twenty thousand dollars in today's dollars if my inflation is five percent per year compounded annually three years from now what will that be worth alpha solve okay so a car that today costs twenty thousand dollars 
Today, the car costs $20,000. If the inflation is 5% per year, I would expect that three years from now, not the car I buy today will be worth this in three years. What I'm saying is, if I want to buy this car today, and today this particular vehicle would cost me $20,000, if I simply wait three years at 5% inflation, I would expect that car to cost me $23,152.50. So yeah, cheaper to buy the car now, right? Okay, so this car now is cheaper than that car then okay again here's a quick summary on apr versus apy i mentioned that a little bit um, ago remember that the apr the annual percentage rate apr annual percentage rate is the rate paid on an annual basis apy is what you actually get for that interest rate what the yield actually is okay Couple more problems. If I invest fifteen hundred dollars, and I'm going to use my TBM solver again, like I said, if I invest fifteen hundred dollars into an account earning four percent interest compounded monthly, what will my investment be worth after one year? A equals fifteen hundred. Right? There's my P times one plus point zero four over twelve to the 12 times one. I can set this up into the equation if I want to, or I could go right to my TBM solver, okay? So if I go to my TBM solver, I'm investing $1,500 at 4% interest, compounded monthly for one year. I don't need to do the times one. I just wanted to make that point. Okay. What will my account be worth at the end of the one year? At the end of the one year, it's going to be worth 156111. Okay. Now, what is my APY? To calculate my APY, I don't try to work with $1,500. Quite honestly, I don't even do the formulas that I see in most calculus, I'm sorry, in most math, most math books. What I simply do is change my investment from $1,500 to $100, because what happens to $1 happens to each of the dollars. So if I simply change this, each $100 will become worth $104.07, so my APY is simply the 4.07%. Okay, let me fix that. 4.07% right right here is 1.07 percent which account will bring a higher return 6.5 percent compounded monthly 6.7 percent compounded annually on the one hand I want to say the higher interest rate is going to do better but on the other hand the greater frequency might do better which one is better now if I invest $100 at 6.7% interest compounded annually for one year. This should be fairly predictable. At the end of the one year, I have $106.7. I earned 6.7% because it's annual. However, if I invest my $100 at 6.5% interest, Compounded monthly for 12 months, one year, 12 months, I will actually earn $106.7. So this is also about 6.7%, a tiny bit less, but 6.7%. So that tells me that if I've got a choice between these two accounts, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time trying to decide which one's better, which one's worse. Okay. Last topic here, this is kind of interesting. It's something to be aware of, both as a consumer and as a lender. Never be a lender doing payday loans, at least what you see a lot of times. Okay, um, Some lenders seek to exploit people in need of immediate cash. There are loan companies who will loan in advance for a paycheck. Okay, In advance for a paycheck. These loans are usually for a week or two, 
and they're called payday loans. Okay, so you come to me and you say, hey, um, I'm going to get paid in a week. Um, I need to borrow eight hundred dollars. If I borrow eight hundred dollars for a week, you know, will you do that? Okay, you give me back, you know, eight hundred and twenty bucks. And somebody says, oh, twenty bucks, no big deal. Okay, my cash now used to be um, an actual place. Uh, on the internet, website on the internet, where you could borrow uh, cash in a payday loan type situation. Um, so let's suppose, uh, and, and actually when I looked them up to make this um, note guide, these were actual terms that I saw that were that were going, right? $500 for 14 days, finance charge is $109.90. Okay, this was legit. Well, legit in the fact, real, not legit in the fact, good, okay? If a person borrows $500 for 14 days, what is the annual percentage rate for the loan if they have to repay a finance charge of $109.90? This begs a really fun question. What's the difference between an investment and a loan? And the short answer is which team you play for. So if you come to me and you borrow money from me at $500, or $500 for two weeks and pay me a finance charge of $109.90, that's like I'm investing in you, I'm investing my $500 and earning $109.90 in interest. So in the TVM solver, this becomes fairly simple. The present value of my investment is $500. The future value is negative 609.90. That's the 500 plus the 109.90, okay? Annual percentage rate means that these would each be one. Now, the other thing that's interesting is what's my time in years? Well, it's 14 days. That would be 14 365ths of a year. Alpha solve. Seventeen thousand six hundred and sixty nine point two percent. Remember, we don't move the decimal. Yes. Seventeen thousand percent. Seventeen thousand six hundred and sixty nine point two percent. There is a reason that you should flee these payday loan people. OK, don't do that because it actually is seventeen thousand six hundred. I can go with the whole big thing about looking out for your money and all that kind of stuff. Not the purpose of this video. The purpose here is to calculate that. Notice that the TVM solver, I can treat that like it's an investment and um, work out the percentage fairly quickly. Okay, so there's a look at compound interest. There's a lot in here. How to work with the, in, the formula. I can work with it algebraically. I'm going to assist my computation by using the calculator, but I can also use the TVM solver. And I think that both are important. I use the formula, and I will expect that you can use the formula for doing basic computations. Once they become many repeated problems that I need to do, and once they start getting a little bit complicated, then I go and I use a TVM solver, as I would suggest that you do as well.